Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the CTT for client testing. In this video, we will describe what client testing means and how it differs from server testing. We'll take a look at a CTT project and configuring it. Then we'll demonstrate how to do client testing. And then we'll describe some of the other videos that you may find interesting. So the CTT is used for testing a client for compliance. This is a, this is a manual testing procedure. Uh, it can be a little bit time consuming. It's quite different to server testing where a server exposes a interface that we can connect to and test. A client doesn't. So it requires somebody, a person, to sit there and observe behavior. But the injection scripts within the CTT are based on JavaScript, so you can see them, use them, modify them, create more, etc. There's about 500 tests and more are coming. The tests mostly include error injection. Uh, we want to make sure that clients behave like normal anyway, and that's done through observation. But there are also use cases that we need to force on a client to see how it handles those. And lastly, even client testing can be automated with the CTT. So you can incorporate compliance testing as part of your unit tests and have those run within a CI system. So let's take a look at how this works. So we've got a client, a CTT in the middle, and a server. So the client is going to send a request to the server, but it goes through the CTT something like a read or a write or create subscription, etc. So the message is sent to the CTT, the CTT receives it and then forwards that request to the server. So it's literally receive it and forward it. The server does what it does best. It responds to an incoming request. So that response goes back to the CTT. And in this case, the CTT will do nothing with the response except send it down to the client. Now, when doing that, what have we accomplished? Well, not a lot, but we do have a log of that call and we can see the request and the response. So we can see that conversation going on between the client and the server. And this is actually the first step of testing. This is your baseline. This is observing if the call works as expected. The next part of testing is seeing what happens when things don't quite go according to plan. So again, the client sends a read, write, browse, any kind of request to the CTT, which gets forwarded to the server. The server then responds back to the CTT. And at that point, that's when we start doing something special. The CTT script will modify the server's response. So it might change the result code to say from good to something like bad internal operation error or something. So it's going to modify that response and then send it to the client. Now the client is expected to handle that. See, the client wasn't expecting this response. So does it crash? Does it display information that it shouldn't? Does it display information in the log to tell the end user what's going on? And again, this is where the person who's doing the testing We'll need to observe the client to see how it handles these situations. These error injection tests are really crucial for testing for robustness, and they can be helpful at testing for recovery as well. Let's take a look at the CTT and creating a new project for client testing. So we've got the CTT open. We go to the file menu, choose new project. It's going to be a client test, and then we'll give it a name, and then specify a location for where all of the settings and test script files will be copied. Click OK. It takes a couple of seconds to copy everything. Once you see the CTT, you have a project. Let's take a look at what's in there. So we'll use the command prompt. Let's go into the client project folder. We'll take a look. What are the folders that exist? So we've got a library, main tree, and a PKI folder. The library contains scripts that are reusable code functions used in our test script. So that's not important. The 
The PKI folder is our certificate store and it contains just a handful of scripts that certificates needed for making a connection. The main tree contains all of our test scripts for injection. You can see all of those folders are conformance units and within each of those you'll find a number of JavaScript tests. So there's about 500 scripts for testing a client. Now that you have the project defined, the first thing you need to do now is to prepare the CTT to force itself onto a client. What will happen is a client's going to connect to the CTT to the server and it's going to call find servers or get endpoints and the server's going to respond with its endpoints. And if the CTT does not modify them, then the client will connect directly to the server and will bypass the CTT. So in the CTT, you go to the library tab and then you double click the start find servers intercept script and then you run it and this script will modify the response for find servers get endpoints and create session and it will force the CTT's endpoints into those responses. Now that the find intercept is in place let's take a look at the configuration and then we're done. So here's the CTT, we'll go into the settings and the configuration for client testing is very simple. So the underlying server URL is the server that the CTT will forward requests to. So we're using the reference server, so we'll copy and paste that into the setting here. And then the endpoint URL is for the CTT. So this is what will be used for your client. You'll copy and paste this into your client. Click OK and we're done, we're ready. Let's now take a look at how we actually do some testing. So here we've got the reference server running and then we've got the reference client running. And right now both endpoints are the same. So these two are gonna connect directly. We don't want that. Let's go back to the CTT settings and we'll copy the CTT's endpoint. Let's get out of here, minimize. We'll go back to our client and we'll paste that endpoint we got to remove security because we cannot have man in the middle. And then we connect. We're connected to the server now, but through the CTT. And we can see at the bottom in the client trace, there's a number of calls going on between the client and the server. And you can view everything, every detail about them. We can see the read is currently successful. Let's see how to break that. So we'll go into the attribute client read base and we'll find a script. So let's take a look. We'll take bad internal error and we'll force that into the response. So we run the script and now it's in a listening mode. So when a read comes in, it's going to respond, but it didn't in this case. Why is that? Ah, it's because this particular node ID is from namespace zero. And there's a setting in the CTT which allows you to ignore namespace zeros because that can cause problems for clients that might think the server is unavailable, etc. So if we go look at other nodes, though, that are not in namespace zero, the injection is now working. I got a bad internal error, which is what I specified in the test script. Well, let's clear that. So we'll, we'll detach. We'll go back and we'll run it again. Let's close the error. Let's try reading a different node. Date time. No, oh, there's all the attribute values. Byte, byte string. Everything's working. Let's go back and inject once again. So bad internal error. We'll click on date time and bad internal error. Well, what if there's a different code I need to check for? Well, let's look at bad invalid state. Now this is going to be used instead of the previous error. And now I'm getting bad invalid state. So that's basically how you test a client. And this was one test, actually two tests, but it is a manual process and you do need to go through it step by step. You need to see for each read, does the default behavior work correctly? Yes, okay. Now let's do the injection. Did it handle it? Yes, great. Go back to the baselines where there's no injection, make sure it works again, and it does, great. Now move on to the next test with the next injection for read. It can take a while. It is a very lengthy process. 
and that's why we encourage people to seriously consider creating unit tests that integrate with the CTT to expedite this testing. And we do have a video on that that uh, we'll show you coming at the end of this walkthrough. So other videos that, that may be of interest to you are script development. If you have specific behaviors that you want to verify, you can create your own scripts in the CTT. You can also use the advanced debugging capability. So this is an interesting video that will show you how to put the CTT in between a client and a server, just like we did when we did our testing, and how you can use that for some very sophisticated debugging, which is useful if your client is having interoperability issues with a server and the trace logs are not giving you what you need, well, the, the CTT may be able to give you that information. And then lastly, the video that we just mentioned a moment ago, integrating the CTT into your overnight build system is crucial. You should be doing this already. As your developer checks in source code and it's compiled and unit tests are done, compliance testing should be done also. And then once it's integrated into an automated process, you'll never have to think about doing this again until you get an error from the, the CI telling you that something didn't work as expected. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and, and got some value from it. There's a lot of good testing that you can do on your client and the CTT is very powerful that it will help you to accomplish those testing goals. So we encourage you to take a look at the other videos and let us know if you have any questions or comments. So we always love hearing from our members and uh, you can reach us at the information on screen.